We are at Flip Watch. Flip Watch. Can the number three quarterback in the 2023 class, Dante Moore, flip from Oregon to UCLA? Can the number one offensive lineman in the country, offensive tackle from the state of Iowa, Iowa committed to Iowa, Caden Proctor, is he about to flip to Alabama Crimson Tide? We're two days away from National Signing Day and big two-time prospects, recruits, are about to flip. We'll get into all that here. We're also going to be talking about fear. Fear is the greatest motivation in conference realignment. Hang with me. Let me explain. Welcome to College Football's Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar, episode 119. Let's not waste any time. Let's get to the stories of Flip Watch. We are under Flip Watch. Report chances are drastically low that Oregon holds on to five star Dante Moore, the third highest rated quarterback in the 2023 class. He's been committed to the Ducks for months, written by Zachary Neal from Ducks Wire. The last few days have seemingly pointed toward one outcome for the Oregon Ducks. Five star quarterback Dante Moore flips his commitment to the UCLA Bruins. The latest intel from 247 Sports, Steve Whitfong, and he is the very best. Steve Whitfong is the best at the recruiting analysis across the country. Maybe the most damaging information in the narrative so far. On Saturday, Wiltfong reported that all signs point towards more committing to UCLA and it would take a massive change for Dan Lanning and the Ducks to hold on to the elite prospect. Friday night's intel says it all but, but it's all but done that he would end up in Westwood, Wiltfong wrote. Ducks head coach Dan Lanning and new offensive coordinator Will Stein are working to hold on to more late in the process, but the likelihood of that unless something changes is drastically low. Moore took an official visit to UCLA last weekend, which was the first sign of trouble for the Ducks. The buzz surrounding a potential flip has built since then. The idea is that Los Angeles Moore would have a path to start as a true freshman. The same cannot be said in Eugene with the potential return of Bo Nix for the 2023 season. And yes, Bo Nix is returning. All reports, Bo Nix himself, Bo Nix is returning for Oregon. So you can see Dante Moore's decision making, right? If he goes to Oregon next year, he's not going to play right away as the starter, not to start the season. But if he goes to UCLA, he will. This is a big get for Chip Kelly if it happens, and it looks like it's going to happen. A big time flip for Chip Kelly and the UCLA Bruins, and they will have a second year. Third year, Dante Moore ready to go for the Bruins and that offense going into the Big Ten Conference starting in 2024. That is huge. But this could be even a bigger flip because this could be a sign of a decline of the Iowa Hawkeyes football program. Let's take a look at this growing story. Another flip, Alabama picking up steam with five-star Caden Proctor, big-time offense alignment. 247 Sports is not expecting Des Moines South P Southeast Polk five-star offensive lineman Caden Proctor to sign with Iowa. The programs he's been committed to since June 30th. Alabama, Colorado, and Oregon are a few of the programs that have been trying to make a move with the 247 Sports number one offensive tackle down the stretch. And coming out of return trip to Tuscaloosa this weekend, it appears the Crimson Tide have the momentum. And now all the crystal balls are flowing in for Alabama, including St Steve Whitflong. His crystal ball and others are rolling in. It looks like Caden Proctor is about to flip from Iowa to Alabama. Some Iowa fans are not taking this very well, and you can't blame them. You can't blame them. Here is a, is a tweet from a guy named Fullback, you at U underscore Fullback. Five-star decommitting from an in-state team less than a week before signing day is probably the most disrespectful thing you can do as a recruit. There's a lot of steam coming out of the Hawkeye fan base. You're two days away 
from National Signing Day. And now you flip. If he does so, he hasn't done it quite yet. If Proctor flips now, boy, that is very difficult to swallow for the Iowa Hawkeye fan base. Two days away from National Signing Day. But the Hawkeyes, if this happens, has to take the blame onto themselves. That offense has been a wreck. Brian Ferentz is still the offensive coordinator. That offense is going nowhere, nowhere fast. So Iowa, I think this is even a bigger story. Because Oregon, they got Bo Nix for next year. They're going to go back in the high school class of the next year in the 2004 class. They're going to be going after top prospects. They could possibly fill in that void of not having Dante Moore. But the Iowa Hawkeyes filling in that void of not getting Proctor. Ooh, difficult to see. Difficult to see. Now, let's get into the story of fear being the greatest motivation. Hang with me here. I'm going to be taking some time in this episode 119. We're also going to be doing a live show tonight, Monday night, December 19th, at Harry Peak Around the Corner. You might want to tune in to that. Motivation. Now, I've been seeing some charts, some really good charts and graphics made by people a lot smarter than me. Basically saying, arguing that these Pac-12 schools are not going to separate from themselves. They're too aligned with each other. They're, they're too, um, they hold, mo- they, they, they share the same values. They're constructed the same way. They, they have the same research and academic standards. They're, none of those schools are going to go to the Big 12. Maybe none of them will. We said on our li- live show, they could, they could. And it's a growing concern. I, there is fear growing in the Pac-12. And it fear is the greatest motivation for realignment. It always has been. I've always argued this. Let me go back in time. And then I'm going to bring it to the, to the now. Where Colorado and in Arizona, there is fear growing amongst Pac-12 universities. And the fear is built around exposure for the student athletes the deficit of exposure let me show you other fears uh, that i commented on months ago in regards to ucla here is a little video i put out on april 4th since then it's gotten over 209,000 views it was when i was first reported i first reported on march 31st but then about USC calling the Big Ten and the reasons why. And then I put out a few videos through April, made my arguments in May, announced it in June, June 30th with the official announcement. Just listen to this video. And then I'm going to get quickly to what's going on in the Pac-12 today. This was back in April 4th and why USC called the Big Ten. Just give it a listen. This was a couple months before the official announcement. The USC called the Big Ten. How do I know this? Everybody who knows me knows that I'm a nobody. But everybody who knows me knows that I'm a nobody who knows a somebody. And that somebody has been breaking stuff since 2014. The USC, USC, University of Southern California is in the process of making sure that the stratification that's been happening at the top level of college athletic sports, that the USC remains on the top of that line and not on the bottom. In other words, USC is going to make sure that they are with the Big Ten and the SEC 30 schools that now exist, that they're getting that type of revenue, media revenue. USC is in the process, and part of that process is calling the Big Ten, and they did that a while ago. We just learned about it Thursday night. When Texas and Oklahoma called the SEC to ask if they could be invited to the conference, of course the SEC was going to say yes, because Oklahoma and Texas are so valuable. But another reason why the SEC was going to say yes because they didn't want Oklahoma and Texas calling anybody else. And that is where Kevin Warren sits today. USC called the Big Ten. So Kevin Warren has to act. The Big Ten was not in favor of expanding 
with Pac-12 schools after SEC, after Oklahoma and Texas left at SEC. For numerous reasons, one of those reasons is valuation. Another reason is the Big Ten didn't want to poach the Pac-12 because they're sister conferences. Another reason has to do with the Big Ten has always wanted to be a two-regional conference, and the East Coast is where they were going to go next again for expansion in the early 2030s. But USC called. They called the loan. And this is where we are today. Next video. Okay, so that was a video put out on April 4th. It is basically describing the fear of USC fearing that they're going to get way below that revenue stratification line. This was their prime motivation. Prime motivation was revenue, right? They have enough revenue to compete in the changing world of college football, college sports. And this is, we've explained this in other episodes. But the fear was there, a big enough fear for USC to finally call the Big Ten, right? And it was based around revenue, okay? When we put this out there on April 4th, not, not a whole lot of media people were, were paying attention, but the people who were paying attention to us, there was a quite a bit of a blowback. Well, Big Ten's not interested. Big Ten's not going to expand. Big Ten, Big Ten's not going to do this and that. Um, let, me, let me just give you a couple of tweets that we put out at the time to respond to those comments. This was April 6th, two days after the tweet. I've read some good analysis in the last 48 hours of USC Big Ten, but most of it comes from the Big Ten view of difficulties of adding a West Coast due to miles. Not enough analysts on USC's limited options on getting above stratification revenue line. This motivation has brought Big Ten into play. USC called the Big Ten. And then Kevin Warren, there was being pressure put on Kevin Warren to act on this. It was a soft push. I was being used. Other people were being used in the soft push. We made that perfectly clear. We were transparent and all that. Here's another tweet I put out. Uh, April 6th, again, $120 million less every th three years by the end of the decade, and that is on the conservative side. You don't hire Lincoln Riley only to handcuff his staff, recruiting, a facility budget, and limit Trojan's national exposure by not making sure you end up above the stratification revenue line. Once again, this was about fear. Fear pushing USC to call the Big Ten finally, right? To get this thing going. And at that time, they called a loan. Now, there's been a lot of, this isn't the first time that fear was what pushed realignment to happen we had big 10 the big 10 finally uh, got into action to expand out east with maryland and rutgers yes they got all the cable boxes economically at the time it made sense demographics it made sense population centers it made sense but the fear of penn state looking around even back to the acc listen to what jim delaney said the fear, listen to other athletic directors within the conference at the time when Maryland and Penn State, uh, Maryland and Rutgers was added. It was fear, motivation. That's what motivated them, fear to get another two schools out east with Penn State to make Penn State feel more like they're part of the Big Ten. Texas and Oklahoma had their, their fear that the Big 12 wasn't going to be able to to hang with the SEC and the Big Ten in money and exposure. So they called the SEC. Nebraska going to the Big Ten. Nebraska had fear that something was about to implode in the Big 12 at the time. You all know the story. Gonzaga right now has the fear that they're not going to be able to keep up in exposure to keep their big brand basketball, basketball team the basketball program to keep going years out. They want to get with the Power Six Conference, and it looks like they want to get in to the Big 12. It looks like that's going to happen soon. Fear, motivation. Why am I bringing this up on episode 119 on December 19th? Why am I doing this, you're asking? Again, a lot of people are bringing up really good analysis, conversation, 
graphics, pie charts, showing how the Pac-12 schools are more in line with each other than anybody in the Big 12. I get that. I understand that. Colorado, even though they're part of the Big 12, most of their students, the growing number of students, I should say, are coming from the state of California. I understand that or Arizona is, tied, is tightly tied to the state of California and the Pac-12 schools. We get that at peek around the corner. But we also understand the fear factor that isn't part of those charts, those graphics. You can't capture the fear factor. And the fear here is, is quite honestly exposure. We are on uncharted waters with Amazon potentially getting most of the Pac-12 content. What will that do? How many eyeballs will be on Colorado football? How many eyeballs will be on Arizona football? Basketball, where is that going? Is Pac-12 basketball going to be the third in line in the ESPN hierarchy behind ACC and SEC? Or, you know, Big 12 is going to be showcased brilliantly on Fox Sports along with Big 10. Arizona has exposure fears. Colorado has exposure fears. There is fear growing inside the Pac-12. And that is the motivation that finally pushes conference realignment. Again, like we said in our live show, it could happen. It could happen. There's a growing possibility it will happen. And fear is the motivation that finally pushes a president to call another president because the athletic director keeps knocking on the president's door and saying, I fear, I fear for our student athletes and our front porch of our university is not going to get the revenue or is not going to get the exposure or we're not going to be able to compete at the highest levels or we're going to get buried by the other conferences, the other schools, the other universities. Fear is the greatest motivation. Put down your comments down in the comments section below the video. Let me know your thoughts. And again, until next time, from all of us at Peek Around the Corner to all of you, please, you all take care of each other. Thank you so very much.